Hey everyone, this is Daily Dose of Medicine. In this video, we will talk about Epidermolysis bullosa. It's a group of rare genetic disorders that affect the skin and mucous membranes. It's characterized by the formation of blisters and sores on the skin and the body's internal lining, such as the mouth, esophagus, and respiratory tract. These blisters can occur in response to minor trauma or friction, even from simple actions like rubbing or scratching. This is important for this disease. The skin consists of three main layers, the epidermis, which is the outer layer, the dermis, which is the middle layer, and the subcutaneous tissue, which is the innermost layer. In this disease, the proteins that provide structural support and adhesion between these layers are either missing or defective, leading to skin fragility. Here are some common signs and symptoms of epidermal cystic Before we talk about the signs and symptoms, I would like to say signs and symptoms, the severity of signs and symptoms depends on the subtype. Blisters is really common symptom. These are the hallmark feature. They can range in size from small to large and may be filled with clear or bloody fluid. Erosions and open wounds are also common. The blisters may burst leaving painful open wounds or erosions on the skin. These wounds can be slow to heal and may have behind scars. Scarring in some types of epidermolysis bullosa, particularly in this trophic subtype, healing of the wounds can lead to scarring, which can cause further complications. We will talk about subtypes in the further slides. Mucosal involvement is important in more severe forms. Blisters and erosions can also occur on the mucus membranes lining the mouth, esophagus, and other internal organs. This can lead to difficulty swallowing, gastrointestinal problems, and respiratory issues. We could see nail deformities. It can cause abnormal nail growth, including nail thickening, splitting, and loss. Tooth decay and oral problems could be seen. In some cases, it can affect the teeth, leading to dental issues, and increase susceptibility to cavities. Hair and scalp involvement important. Some types may also affect the scalp and hair, leading to hair loss and fragile hair. Photosensitivity individuals with certain types may experience increased sensitivity to sunlight, resulting in skin reactions when exposed to UV lights. Lastly, we have anemia and nutritional deficiencies. Chronic skin wounds and issues with the gastrointestinal tract can lead to poor absorption of nutrients, potentially resulting in anemia and nutritional deficiencies. It's important to note that severity can vary significantly between individuals and different types. Some people may experience relatively mild symptoms, while others may have more severe and life-threatening complications. There are several subtypes, and the severity of the condition can vary widely depending on the specific genetic mutation. Let's talk about the subtypes. Epidermolysis bullosa simplex, which is the most common form, and is characterized by blistering in the epidermis, which is the outer layer. It tends to be a milder form, with blisters often appearing at size of friction, like hands, feet, and knees, just like you see on this picture. Junctional epidermolysis bullosa is other type. It involves dermoepidermal junction, which is the Junction between inner and outer layer, and it's typically more severe than epidermolysis bullosa simplex. Blisters may occur over large areas of the body and can be life threatening if they affect respiratory tract. Kindler syndrome, this is a rare type that involves multiple skin layers and is characterized by presence of blistering, photosensitivity, and skin atrophy. Now that we have talked about subtypes, I'd like to talk about treatment. Treatment is mainly supportive and aimed at managing symptoms and preventing infection. This may involve wound care, pain management, and infection control. Multidisciplinary care teams, including dermatologists, wound care specialists, and genetic counselors play a crucial role in providing comprehensive support to those affected by this condition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch our Bloom Syndrome video, don't forget to watch our Interesting Diseases playlist, don't forget to watch our Folate Deficiency Science video. See you on the next one.